Welcome to this edition of the Douglas County School District Growing Together podcast. We will be talking to leaders, educators, specialists, and community members about topics that matter to our students, our schools, and our community. Let's jump into this week's episode as we grow together. Welcome to the podcast today. I am remotely talking today with Kent Allison, a technology and engineering teacher, department chair, and technology student association advisor at Mountain Vista High School, and also with Debbie Tauser, who is the digital design and engineering teacher, and also the technology student association advisor at Legend High School. I'm really excited to have these guys in, I was going to say in the studio today, but really joining me remotely today to talk about some of the things we learned in our last podcast after we talked with Joy Griffin. So welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thanks for having us today. Absolutely. So last week, I had a chance to interview Joy Griffin. She is our CE and CTE coordinator, and she talked a lot about the programming in in Douglas County School District. And she really highlighted some of the work that you guys are doing at both of your individual high schools. But additionally, she shared some of the work that you're doing right now to support our medical workers at Skyridge. Can you tell us both about your program and how that brought you to the opportunity to support Skyridge? So a little bit of our program, we've kind of been able to work with different teachers around our district and around the state just to kind of formulate what does technology and engineering look like in in our classrooms. And we've both been able to try to move toward that with our equipment and our teaching and really looking at that design piece with students. And so students have access to some pretty crazy equipment in our labs, laser engravers, 3D printers, 3D CAD software lots of different opportunities for students to apply design thinking and, and problem solving to uh, the real world. And that's that's kind of what we've been shooting for in our programs. And so that kind of led us into this project. Great. Agreed. Um, we, we have very similar programs. Kent and I work uh, closely together along with some other teachers in the district on building those programs and supporting each other in those programs. So this opportunity with Skyridge really, it was a way to bring that all to life and, and to be able to use some of the equipment we have to help in this in the fight against COVID right now. And we're, we were able to use our 3D printers to begin printing face shields, visors for face shields, um, and donating those to Skyridge. Tell me a little bit about how that works. Actually, I have two questions coming from what you both said. I'm going to hear more about just the design thinking process and how that might have got you to this stage. But then I'm really interested to hear about exactly how are you able to create the medical professionals are needing from the materials that you have. Well, I think it goes back to the students understanding the process of how to design and create you know, virtually anything. And I think right now with this pandemic is looking at what equipment is needed out there. And so there's a there's a big movement, they call it like a maker movement, um, people that are able to fabricate and create things from home or small business settings. And mm-hmm. we kind of fit that category with the equipment and things that we were able to, to use in our classrooms. And so showing students firsthand that you can take things from a design aspect and something in CAD and then use those files to additive manufacture or 3D print something and then use that equipment in everyday life, and especially in times where you can actually have some better things in uh using that equipment. And that's the cool roundabout process of what the students are seeing come to life right now. Can you talk to our community a little bit about any information that you might have about the continued need that our medical professionals have? Yeah, well, I'll kind of feel this. So how this kind of came about is we were diving into this online learning piece and a lot of the things I, I kept coming back to is, is seeing all these these things being created for medical people and medical personnel that are 3D manufactured, 3D printed. And I shot it out to the only doctor I know who lives in, in the Highlands Ranch in our feeder area. And I said, hey, do you think this is something that you would possibly need? And she's like, oh my, yeah, I mean, this this could be a huge and so she she's a part of a Facebook group of other doctors around the Denver metro area. And that's how she kind of reached out to all these different places that we've been able to provide face shields to. And then literally the next morning, we get an email from Joy saying, hey, can we create face shields for, for Skyridge? So we were kind of working on these in tandem. And then 
it, it kind of evolved from there. We've reached out to different local groups. I know our just the nation, we've got some, we have like a parent group on Facebook and mm-hmm. we've reached out through them and been able to provide a bunch of different doctors and uh, medical facilities from that. Debbie's had some contacts we're doing right now for Swedish Medical to provide some over 100 face shields for them that's upcoming that we're working on right now. So they just keep coming in. So the, the need is there, and that's just from the context that we know kind of as a group. Amazing. Debbie, anything that you want to add to either of those points? It's been great for our students to also get involved in this process as well. And some of them have 3D printers at home, and they've been able to help and we've been able to have great conversations about how we do bring that design that we talk about in class all the time to life in situations like this, and that it's not just doing things in the classroom, but it really has application in the real world. I think that you make a really good point. I think it's a amazing and selfless act that you guys are, are doing to create these face shields for our medical professionals. But at the same time, you're still teaching right now during this national pandemic. How are you able to continue to connect with your students? What's it like as a teacher carrying on with your daily classroom instruction? I think for me, students have a lot of questions. I think in a lot of cases, especially through this project, a lot of kids want to help. They want to see how they can help and do something. And then connecting with students is having virtual office hours and, and rethinking things the way that we do things and just being there to still develop those relationships and continue those relationships with our students, which is the most important thing that I feel like we need to do right now for them. Yeah, I think just to echo that, getting kids involved, they they really love diving in and helping out and being able to put those skills that they learned in our classes to use to design new medical equipment. And then coming up with new needs, we've kind of created a, some of my upper level kids, we had a shared document where we were gathering resources and we shared them with some engineers in our community that were working on how to sanitize these masks for medical workers. And so the kids really got to work and, and dove into some research with that. And we're able to provide them with some ongoing and really current research that's continuing to come out, even on a daily basis, we're getting new research from how can we solve this challenge. And so it really kind of ties in kind of a crazy time, like you're engineering on demand, essentially, which is pretty neat to see and experience firsthand. Absolutely. It brings a new definition to the, the relevance of things that are going on in your classroom. What advice or strategies do you have for students as they navigate learning in this new environment, our new remote learning environment? I think it's what we do in class all the time. Ask questions. Just ask if you don't know participate, get involved. It's all the things we encourage students to do in our regular classes all the time. Just ask. Um, You know, I think we want to help, but sometimes we don't always know what questions you have until you reach out and ask us about those. Right. Kent, any advice for for strategies for your students? Well, I I think I talked to my, my students beforehand. I had a little experience. I'm teaching an online course through a Colorado program called Colorado Digital Learning Solutions. And so kind of dipped my toes into teaching this way over the past year. So got a chance to do it. And some of the advice I gave my students um, before we left was, you know, stay on top of it and, and just continue to progress throughout the week instead of waiting for everything to, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to wait and do all my work at the end of the week. Don't do that. Mm-hmm. Like continue to work on it. That way it doesn't build up and, those are some of the same skills we use in our in our classroom as well. Right. I've, I've had to do that for myself is to kind of reevaluate my daily schedule. I think that's good advice. What do you wish that every student, parent, and family knew about your program or about CTE in general? I think for us, it's being a part of our community and really what our community needs. We've been super fortunate to have an amazing principal with Mike Weaver, and he kind of really instilled in us that we want to be a comprehensive school offer all those different opportunities to students. And the thing that, that I feel kind of pride towards is being able to provide that opportunity for our community, for, you know, the technical type of students. So it kind of fits that niche of students uh, within our building because we have a wide range of students that are involved in a, an amazing amount of things in our school, like different clubs and, and things like that. And so it's, it's just neat to be able to provide that that part of that comprehensive school uh, within our community. I would echo that. Uh, I just think that 
to being able to provide that for students, the opportunity to um, explore career pathways, to explore options outside of just core classes, to, to be able to offer that elective perspective for students. And some may decide it's what they want to do in the future, and some may decide it's not what they want to do. But providing that opportunity for students, I think even kids that may not go into engineering, some of the design skills that they use, they may be able to use those later in different ways. So I think we provide some of those real-world skills and problem-solving skills for students. Absolutely. What do you think is the most rewarding experience? What brings you the most joy as you work with students in your various programs or even that you've experienced as this time that you've been supporting during our pandemic? I think it's really just seeing students try and be in their element of experiencing those successes and things like that and be able to help their community. That's super fulfilling to me. Just to see the level of engagement, I think, too, is to see the students really dive in and you know they're putting in a, an effort and really doing their best towards something. That's, that's fun to watch. I would agree. Watching them shine, watching them dig in, deep, listen to the level of questioning that they have sometimes around things and some things they really challenge me to, to think about things differently as well. But I think it's really the relationships with students that's the most rewarding part for me. I really um, enjoy that. Just getting to know students and in a lot of different ways, both through our student organizations and just in the classroom as well. well it sounds like you both are modeling of that inquiry, being inquisitive to your students as well to really get them involved in, in the work. Kent and Debbie, if we have some listeners out there today that are in need or want to find out more about your work, how can they get in contact with you or reach you? Sure. If they want to reach out, feel free to email us. Hopefully it'll be in a, in a link somewhere near this podcast and we'll put you in touch with the group if you want to help out and create things uh, or if you're a medical building or hospital or office that needs support and need help with face masks or mask straps, please reach out and we can provide those for you. Is there anything else that you want to share with our listeners uh, about either your program or the work that you're doing today in particular before we wrap up today? I think the only thing I would say is I'm proud to be in our district. I'm proud to work with amazing people Ed, and uh, all the teachers around in our programs and, and really have a good district leadership that gives us opportunities and it really encourages us to explore these opportunities with students so that, you know, we can have the support that we need to keep continuing offering these opportunities to students. I would agree. I, I, I feel like I've been blessed through my whole career in Douglas County to just have the opportunity to be able to do what I'm passionate about and, and bring that to students and um, work with amazing people. Agreed. Well said. I am so pleased and proud of the work that you guys are doing as well. I'm just honored to be able to have you on the podcast today and learn about the work that you're doing. I have really appreciated and enjoyed the time with you today. Thanks for being here. Thank, Thank you for having me. Thank you for the opportunity.